Hey guys. Okay, so here's a uh, little short introduction to my AR wing here that I've put together. Now I bought this a while ago. I bought this before I bought it. I'm getting a mess in it. Before I bought the uh, big slab. And I bought it because look at it. It looks awesome, that sort of shape. I know a lot of them look like this anyway, but it just looks awesome. I mean, the, the wing does look good, but I know it's not an easy one to fly. And I've actually got first hand experience of that now, they're not being that easy to fly. Uh, it's got this it's quite a bit of tape. Because what I did, I set it all up once, and because I couldn't get the servos working, I couldn't get them working properly. Like, it's got to work in like a couple of ways on this. Like if you're going to have it in um, like any sort of assisted mode, uh, be it you know, GPS return to home or anything like this, well, you, you want your servos to work. So if it starts going down, you know the the services are going to move in order to pull it back up again. And if it banks, it's going to be corrected. And whenever I did one, one would like going wrong, or you know, you, it, one of them would just go like hard up. And nothing else would be going on. It was just all wrong, and I couldn't get it figured out. I couldn't get it figured out. But eventually, um, I've managed to do it. And the servo, the, the servo system changed. I think it was like 1.9 or 2, but it changed the 9 now, and that's just made it a bit easier for me now. To be honest with you, I couldn't just say to you, "Hey, this is how I did it," because what it seemed to be was I couldn't get it figured out. <laughs> and then I played around, played around, played around. Eventually, it worked, but. I didn't remember exactly how I did it, but the nice thing about it is I, I can uh, look at the settings in the radio and everything else and see, and what I do see is in the radio I've set my yaw different, it's opposite, so if I go left on the yaw it goes right, but no, everything works, everything works on here the way I needed to, I will figure that out and do it the correct way, it makes no difference, I don't use yaw anyway apart from accessing the on-screen display menu, and as I know that I just do the opposite, rather than if there's a menu item here and I yaw that way I uh, just yaw this way instead and I get into that so not a problem everything else is the same uh, yeah but this has got a flight control in it it's so when I first tried to uh, try to put one together have it working it looks a bit messy with the wiring but hey yeah, don't worry about it it's a nice clear picture that's what we need there's no interference and it works um, so I, I've, uh, I did I started off with the power distribution board and a flight controller but now I've moved to this uh, F405 wing because it's a it's a easy one it's a, it's, a, it's good it's, it's easy it's good it's got um, everything that I need on here for this build and more you know I've not even set up the waypoint mission I've not done anything like that yet There's the maidens is going to come after this video um, but <laughs> this has just been a you know it's, it's, it's just been a little bit of fun to fly today it's been quite good so I've got a GPS module in here. It's not the one I wanted. I did put this in my Sky Hunter, but for some reason it kept. It was working and it wasn't working. It must have been something I was doing. Um, but I put a different GPS in there and it worked fine. So I just thought, okay, I'll just leave this one out. But so this one's a bit big ass. I think this is about 12 grams. This. Um, the other one's only about four and a half, five grams. But it's working great. I was doing good there. Uh, I've got a camera switcher because I've got the GoPro of a Hero 4 in the front there and I've got the little little Swift Micro in there at the minute I do like this I like the idea that I can put different cameras in there you know um, I do like that idea that's uh, pretty good so just try out other cameras that'd be quite good uh, I'm using the TBS I've taken this off my multi-rotor uh, this VTX, it's just a TBS VTX, 200 milliwatts. I keep it on generally most of the time, just because I didn't really need it any higher. You fly close around you, and um, you know, with 600 milliwatts, you get a lot of reflections. It's not really worth it, especially where I fly. There's a big old building, metal building, the council building, and um, I get, you know, I get interference from that anyway, especially on 2.4 gigs, because I've noticed that with the receiver um, for the Sky Hunter. So yes, yeah, so I'm using 8XR in here from Shriek, Free Sky, FR Sky, I should say, and then the Matek. I've got a 2.2 amp battery. That's round about right for central gravity, but 
I, I can only I can only fly it manually. I can't fly it in any assist modes at the moment because I cheated yesterday. Because I decided I just wanted to get this up in the air, and I cheated. And rather than me take this out of here because it's soldered onto the ESC, which is in the underneath here, so, yeah, the motors here. Mm -mm. Um, I just copied the gyro um, uh, details, the gyro data from my file that I save. You know, whenever I build a model now and I get it going, it's all good. I just do a diff all in, this, in the command line interface and then save that to a notepad file and call it whatever the, you know, whichever one it is. And because I didn't want to just set this up and the accelerometer on the bench, which I'd probably be better off doing, I, uh, I just chucked it in on the CLI and so that's what this has been set up to this gyroscope so I can't use anything um, I can only use manual basically uh, but that's all right I'm happy I'm happy with that I will get it set up properly uh, I'm going to do that tonight so but so there we go so we've got the ATEX uh, we've got the camera switcher uh, and there I don't run this today I just had it in the front for the weight uh, the GoPro I don't run it today just just in the front for the weight so I can make sure I'm uh, doing that correctly I have actually got a bit of um, like this this foamy stuff to go down the back here just to keep it all nicely in place and I put tape over it as well when I fly it just in case it pops off yeah so there's the antennas for the 8XR X8R I should say just up there I've used a different motor because I was too scared. To, well, there's two reasons actually why. Because I actually put the other motor on that came, you know, with the kit of this. I put it on um, 2.3 kV. But the problem is, the the stem is a little bit longer, and a lot of it is doesn't have any thread. So to put a prop with this size hub on it, this thickness hub, depth of hub. Uh, it, it, it just wouldn't go down. So that was rubbish. It means I had to go and buy special props just for that, for that motor. Yeah. So I kicked that. Uh, this is a 1400 kV because I thought to myself as well, well, uh, you know, 2.3 on 4S is going to be wah, ripper. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to cope with that. So I put a, a lower kV motor on it to tame it down a little bit. And it's also a little bit heavier than the other motor. Um, I don't know why I said that. It's just that it's worth. Just noting that these multi star 1400 kvs are quite a bit heavy, uh, yes, yeah, so that's it. Yes, yeah, so that means I can use any of my six inch multi rotor, even a seven inch prop on this. If you're all right, I'll put some LEDs on there, nothing fancy. They all come on red when it's armed, and you've got red, red, and these two are blue when it's not armed. In actual fact, I'll just power it up. I know it's on the bench, but you need a switch to arm it, arm the motor, so we're not going to be going anywhere or doing anything. It may look a bit messy, but it's not that messed up. There you go, guys. Just a little look at it, lit up. There's not a lot going on there. I know the wires look messy, but they're all twisted up, which is nice, so we keep the interference out. Um, the LEDs on the back there, and what you can see, so if I just arm it. My throttles all the way down. It won't arm with the throttle up anyway. So there we go. So we can have that as we're flying around, or we can just uh, just turn them off. But they normally they come on with in manual mode, like that, or just lights on by themselves. Let's just disarm that. See, I wouldn't even know it was armed like that, but through the LEDs, I know it's armed. There we go. So that's it. That's my little. Uh, well, look like are we not the tidiest, uh, but yeah, you know, a few more builds maybe, and I'll be getting a bit tidier. I've stuck on the old uh, the protection because I don't expect that I'm going to be treating this as delicately as other pilots that fly these things. But I tell you what, it was great flying it. It was uh, I, I did it manual. There's no uh, like I said manual mode. There's no auto launch or anything on this at the minute. Uh, I might consider it or not. I'm going to give it a few more goes. Uh, the way I've looked at it is that this is going to be quite hard to break this VTX because um, it's got this little stubby antenna on it. So that's probably going to take. And it's got a it's got a um, cable tie across here as well, and it's got that rubber glue. So, so that's quite good. But this one, we've, it's just got uh, hot glue. It's going to be easy to break. So if it does get into the fact that I've knocked these off, break these off, I'll put the auto launch on. Okay. 
but I'd like to get up to that point of breaking these, uh, you know, breaking the, uh, the the glue, and then I'll redo it and put the auto launch on. There you go, guys. That's it. And I'll uh, I'll put the maiden video up a little bit later. Cheers for watching.